everybody how are you today today i i will do a little bit different thing i will react to a video called why i still use windows 7 from Tr trigger zolt and he already reacted he made a video about it but i will make a react let's watch the video and see my opinions firefox I use Firefox, not Edge, because Edge is just too bland. And I use Firefox because of the Google Safe browsing. And now I will go to YouTube, youtube.com. Open YouTube. Let's write why I still use Windows 7.2.20 And this is the reaction video and this is the normal video. We will watch normal video. Bombarded with you notifications, Como makes staying on top of every customer message easy. It connects it. all your... Why are you running Windows 7, lol? So, why do you still run Windows 7? Also, is that Windows 7? I admire your bravery. And his main Bro, OS is why do you Windows 7? Windows 7 are using Windows 7 when you use Windows 7. Um, the author of this video, the author, Trigger Zolt, said that, that these are just a little bit of these commands. And let's look. I won't make this video too long, but it is still a long video. So, oh, it is so high. I'm not. This operating system is really old. So old, in fact, that support ended for it almost nine months ago. And I'm pretty sure there are some younger viewers out there that are actually younger than Windows 7 itself. But me, on the other hand, I actually still use it. Ooh. That's kind of weird. Why haven't I moved on to a more modern operating system? Well, let's talk about my possible alternatives. First up, Windows 8.1. Now, Windows 8.1, man. I will try to run it through VMware. Power on this virtual machine. Okay. Yes. Virtual device. Oh. We don't care about virtual devices. Let's start our our match. I think Windows 11 overtakes all of them. Let's open that video over here. Because of OBS, I need to, to make the virtual machine like this. And I don't want to even try, so I will, I will force shut down the VM. Let's X out of this VM, and let's continue watching. Now, I actually use Windows 8.1 on my Surface Pro 3, and I think it runs exceptionally well on a device like this. It has a touch screen, and I can fold it into a tablet, and I think this is one of the best operating systems you could put on a device like this. However, I'm talking about my desktop computer with a keyboard and mouse without a touch screen monitor. And for a device like that, yeah, Windows 8.1 just doesn't make sense at all. First up, I'm just dishing out money for three more years of support, so after three years, I'm gonna have to go through this whole pro- The end of support- for Windows, Windows 8.1 already bypassed and almost two, two months and nine days because today is 19th of, of the March. Oh, happy Chanakale victory. This is all over again. Secondly, the start screen is just bad on a desktop computer. Elements are so big in the start menu that it's just not an intuitive experience for keyboard and mouse users. And I could do some readjusting to Windows 8.1 to actually make it work well, mm -hmm. but it just takes away from the cleanliness. Normally, he made a video to to make Windows 8.1 
look like Windows 7 that's made a big guide and let's continue because this I of the operating don't system want to spend too much and because time. it's so underused when programs stop program. supporting Windows 7 it's probably gonna stop running on Windows 8.1 as well I just don't want to spend money for three more years of support and less program compatibility in the future. I'll talk more about Windows 10, but what about macOS? Well, macOS basically needs entire new hardware to actually function properly. And yes, he is completely true in this regard, I agree, because MacBooks have command instead of control auto option or control and stuff. and. It doesn't really make sense. I like macOS, but not that much because it's somewhat bad. And I will make another video, I think, or I will make a part two to this, to this video. Oh. If I didn't want to buy new hardware, I really don't want to go through the process of hackintoshing because of driver support and limited program <laughs> compatibility. And also, I just don't like the UI of macOS that much. Now, Linux. Linux is too fast that that the Turkish developments and governments make to make a uh, not make to make governments want to make a new operating system in 2040s or 2030s with the so-called TNT Net and Theta Radio Net, which has an Instagram account. Check out that it's very cool, and it is a radio account and. A, television account and there's a Y-A-E-O-S. This is a Turkish thing. It is a streaming industry and it is a Linux distro and I think Linux is a great operating system. Windows 10 is the only logical alternative, however, it just doesn't live up to the standards that Windows 7 had. Welcome to a segment I like to call trashing on Windows 10 because I'm a terrible person. First up, <laughs> lower in ads. Oh, you install a fresh new copy of Windows 10? Let's look at the Windows 11 start menu because when this video came out, Windows 11 wasn't even released. But there was bad things in here too, like TikTok, ESFN, Instagram, Prime Video. If you're on a computer and if you're on work, you don't need this. However, luckily enough, it's it isn't here at all. For example, there's no Instagram. Oh, let's keep exploring. I think this great operating system, it has Wikipedia, but I installed it on my own, so it isn't a regular Wikipedia that is blue for or anything like that. And by the way, I have an Aero Light team, Aero Glass team, like Windows 7, because I like, like Windows 7 now, like, like him, but I think Windows 11 all takes it. Oh, we'll go into the start menu to check out our free apps like Candy Crush Soda Saga. And while you're there, check out our other great third-party apps. For an operating so system that then. markets itself with the sure, phrase, get reason. things done, and that it helps you focus, I find this really obnoxious that there's storage being filled up with really unnecessary ads and bloatware. And every time I uninstall these apps, I feel like they reinstall themselves again every single time. Windows 10 also has a very bland UI with very flat and inanimate elements. Windows 7 has the advantage of Windows Arrow, and Windows 8.1 does have a similar UI, but it's much more colorful and alive, especially considering live tiles are flipping all the time and not like every two minutes on Windows 10. A lot of this could be fixed, by the way, if it wasn't for Windows 10 breaking themes all the time. And here's a big one. Terrible quality feature updates. I feel like every single time... Let's look at the feature updates. Check for Windows 10. This is Turkish, so it's a little bit underwhelming, but never mind. It, I don't think that it is too underwhelming through it. And I have Windows Insider, so no problem out there. I'm up to date and secure, my goodness. Time a feature update was released. 
something has to break, whether it's a program refusing to run properly to the entire operating system just being a garbled mess. This was one of the biggest reasons why- I hate the tablet mode in Windows 10, but luckily enough, there isn't any tablet mode at all on the, the Windows 11. It has sticky touch elements and it has rounded corners. This has square corners because of the picture in picture mode. I actually downgraded to Windows 7 back when I used Windows 10 from 2015 to 2017. However, on top of that, there's also many inconsistencies and duplicate programs, which is one of the most controversial Windows things 11, about Windows 10. And you know what? I'll keep this short. Different right-click menus, different setting... Con For example, this is its own, but I think it is just a too bland thing that just has a look at the task manager and taskbar settings. In the link, it's just had ta taskbar settings, but in the 2020H2 updates, I think it's better. Control menus, different paint programs, and the list goes on. There's so many. Not perfect, but Windows 11 solved it. For example, there is, there is just, there's still both control.exe means control panel. It's in Turkish, so it's a little bit underwhelming. And all, it also has settings, so it is not that much big of a difference. But there is no more paint 3D and Internet Explorer. Or Windows Mini Player, you can just disable it. So, I don't say anything. But I think Microsoft Edge is just too bland. Instead, I just use Firefox. Because Firefox is just better. It is used Google Safe Browsing Magnets. Duplicate programs and inconsistencies in Windows 10 that it just boggles my mind that they didn't fix this yet. There's also the in-your-face aspect of Windows 10, including it begging you to upgrade to the latest version, sometimes without the user's consent, and I've seen this happen a lot. But the, the big downside, which is a drastic turn for Windows 11, is, is, is that Microsoft account. The local account thing has been removed, and it, it is a little bit hard. It's not intuitive at all. But, and if you don't know what you're doing during setup or post installation, you'll sometimes be forced to use a Microsoft account no matter what. I'm pretty sure in an update last year, they actually removed the ability to create an offline account during setup, and that really annoyed me and a bunch of other users. There was a workaround to it, but it just boggles my mind that they're trying to force this into the user no matter what you do, and sometimes people don't want to use a Microsoft account, but Microsoft is shoving it in their throats no matter what. And there's also suggestions everywhere throughout the operating system whenever you're doing something, but I'm pretty sure there's a way to disable that via settings. Windows 10 is also a lot less stable and smooth compared to its predecessors, especially if you're using older hardware and for those using a mechanical hard drive instead of an SSD. Which yes, I use a hard drive because I need more storage. I feel like this also has something to do with feature updates being released twice a year with little optimization from both Microsoft's side, as I've stated before, and the program developer's side because they now need to update their programs for newer versions of Windows 10 depending on how the update affects their programs. However, because the updates are being released twice a year, the cycle happens all over again in the span of about six months. With a combination of desktop and tablet UIs, there are times when some elements are just so big yeah, in Windows 10 that it just doesn't make sense for mouse and keyboard there. users. Like the settings in the settings app being big and spaced out, the calculator buttons being larger, file explorer menu bars being bigger, and so no on. Windows 8.1 does keyword most of this differently because it tries to separate desktop and touch. The touch is in the start screen with all your apps, and the desktop part is in the desktop app. So everything you'd want to do with a keyboard and mouse are found in the desktop app. Windows 10 instead tries to combine all these elements into one, and it just doesn't work well. Oh yeah, and Cortana is basically useless. Wow, that was kind of mean actually. She's mostly useful in a mobile environment when I'm in a hurry and I need to do something quickly. And I feel like this is where virtual assistants thrive. But in this case, I'm sitting down and taking the time to finish my work, so... It's kind of pointless to me. There are some useful features to Windows 10, like extra desktops, but the cons outweigh the pros for me. Windows 10 just feels incomplete and not yet matured, 
So I just don't feel like this is justifiable. And I'd have to deal with all of this for what? Security updates? Which brings me to why Windows 7 is just better. And I'll try to skim through this section a little bit quicker, but Windows 7 is just much more stable, quicker, and smoother, no matter which hardware you're on, whether it's newer or older, or if you're using an SSD or a hard drive. It's also less in your face all the time. It actually just lets you get things done without any disturbances, and you're not being begged to use a Microsoft account or update the operating system all the time. It's way more consistent than Windows 10, and it's much more reliable as well, meaning that nothing breaks after an update all the time. There's also no bloatware, like the preloaded programs are actually useful. Like seriously, Windows accessories are basically all I need preloaded. Why do I need Candy Crush Soda Saga preloaded with Windows 10? It also has hands down the best start menu of all time. Like it's so simple and yet so useful at the same time. I barely have to do any modifications to have a good user experience. And also, just as a side note and a bonus fact that Windows Aero Glass transparency is like the best thing ever. It looks so good. The OS is also designed for keyboard and mouse users, so element sizes make sense and it's faster for me to do certain tasks. In my eyes, Windows 7 was basically the final version of Windows to add some actual useful features just like Vista and XP. And afterward, other just changed major parts of the Windows formula for better or for worse. And this brings us to the final point of this video which everyone's been waiting for. Am I worried about my security? No. I made a Windows 7 survival guide video back when Windows 7 ended support, explaining ways you can keep yourself secure after 2020. But I'll simplify my points. Web browsers are still up to date, antiviruses are still up to date, the majority of other programs are still up to date, and we have brains. Windows Update is not only just one layer of security, but it's honestly the last layer of security because all the other factors I just mentioned basically- When the operating seems like any support, for example, if I go to Windows 10, it's still working on Windows 10. Not ver, but ver, not ver. If you launch CFD and write ver, CFD is not working. Ver, it says version 10.0.2. This means 10.2 is the version of the operating system NT version. Windows 7 is version 6.1, and for example, WhatsApp is a Windows 8 application. So it can't run on, on Windows 7 because Windows 7 is like under support and Windows 8 is under an, support too. So everything is just moved on to Windows 10 and 11 now. And maybe Windows 10 is all of us. Basically supplement this lack of security updates and they're the first layers that viruses go through before they get to Windows Update and Windows itself. And besides, this operating system was last updated in January of 2020. Unless we were in the early 2010s or the late 2000s, most vulnerabilities at this point have been found and currently the chances of getting hacked, supported or unsupported, is slim. Now if I was using this operating system 5 years later, then yeah, this would be a big issue. If my programs are up to date, I'm okay with living without updates. The reason why people don't use XP and Vista anymore is not just because of security updates, but because programs are out of support, which is a much bigger security risk than Windows Update. I'm not encouraging that everyone just starts using out of date operating systems, this is just a personal preference and I'm just not quite ready to make the transition to Windows 10 yet. But what does the future entail for me? I've been keeping up to date on Windows 10 over the past year or two using Windows 7, and I have to say that Windows 10 is finally maturing properly. Things are starting to look like they're in the right place now, even if nothing is perfect. I've also started using a Microsoft account more and more on my phone and my Surface Pro 3 running Windows 8.1, so Windows 10 is starting to become a more appealing option to me. I might be upgrading to Windows 10 sooner or later, maybe in a month or two once the next version, version 2009, finally comes out. However, for the time being, I think I'll stick with Windows. Okay, I think, I think my my predictions or my my things are up to Windows 11. Like, subscribe, and goodbye.